she looked sad. Oh. So Ruby season four was recently announced for October 22nd. The teaser trailer was showed by Rooster Teeth at the RTX in Texas, and probably the biggest thing that people are taking away from it is there is a time skip between when volume three ended and when volume four is going to start. Which leads to so many questions. But let's start with the girls, or at least with very little we do see of some of them. Enter Ruby in her brand new badass outfit and anime cape. I say anime cape as in it can now contract and expand any which way it wants whenever it feels like it. Like in an anime. I don't care if there's possible reason for this that may or may not be explained in season. For now, anime cape. We see in the trailer that Ruby has not only matured physically, but also when it comes to her fighting. I mean, good god, look at some of the stuff that she's pulling off. No more normal knees, Ruby. Sorry. I don't really have a lot to say about new Ruby other than her outfit makes her look a lot more... Combat ready! Get out of here, Penny! Oh no, Penny! Anyway, Ruby's new outfit shows that she's more dressed for battle. Her cape and leggings are torn, showing she's more of a veteran in fighting. And she's equipped herself with what looks like more leather on her corset and bracers. We don't see very much of the other girls, especially not them fighting. All we get to see is really quick shots of them and art for their new looks. White seems to be taking the more princess look and boy is it working for her. Out of all of the girls' new looks, Weiss's full dress is my favorite. I would wear that dress. And I don't do dresses. Jean, your princess is in this castle! Though it might seem like a very small thing, I do like how they moved Weiss's ponytail from the side to the back of her head. It kind of makes her seem a lot more mature. She also has two outfits. One is her full gown and the other one is what I'm guessing is going to be her combat ready. Damn it, Penny! Her combat battle outfit. Out of the four girls, Weiss is actually the one I'm most looking forward to in the way of character development. What role has she played since being taken back to her home? Has she been in contact with the other girls at all? Has she been helping her sister, Winter? Did she figure out summoning without us? She better have not. How has she been behaving towards her father who forced her back home after volume three? Has she been obedient? Disobedient? Has he been keeping her locked up and out of battles? So many questions. I also feel like Weiss's character could go through the most change as well. I mean, when we first met Weiss, the only battle she'd been through was through training, which obviously she took very seriously. By the end of volume three, she had been in her fair share of real life battles and even hurt a couple of times. She also had a deep hatred towards Faunus. And then it turned out one of her teammates was a Faunus. Spoilers? Now she's been forced back home to an environment that hates Faunus, won't let her fight, and she probably has to retake the role of heir to the Schnee company and be quiet and only speak when spoken to. So it'll be interesting to see how much more her character developments from all the stuff that she's been through and all the stuff she's going to go through. Now my first impressions on Blake, and I think it's mainly because of the trench coat, which is awesome by the way. I get the impression that she's been fighting a one-man fight against the White Fang. I don't think she's rejoined them. She's probably been running around ruining their operations here and there as best she can by herself. I also got a mercenary vibe from her new outfit. Again, it's probably because of the trench coat. Also, I love her new boots. Rocking them thigh highs. But the biggest question for me that arises with Blake is has she been in contact with any of the other girls? Or anyone for that matter? Has she been getting intel? Telling them what the White Fang are up to? Places they might be hitting? Anything. And what about Sun? Has he been talking to her? Has she been talking to him? Maybe he went out and found her and is helping her. Oh, that would be so cute. I ship those two. I ship them hard. That didn't come out right. Moving on. And finally we have Yang, which I'm actually getting really mad about Yang's character and where it appears that she's going. Now, I get that where we see her now in the trailer, hopefully won't be where she stays for the rest of the volume and series. And what I mean by that is her depressive, oh, woe is me, Pity, everyone left me, I give up, I don't know what to do, boo hoo hoo, slump of an act that she is in right now. I hate people and characters that do this. Especially when you build them up to be a fun, sarcastic, tries to find the silver lining in situations, but also the person you call in for backup to get any job done. The last line of defense, one badass, hard-hitting, 
tank of a character. And then they get their arm chopped off and they sit at home on a stump slumping while their sister is out there risking their life in a war. It's probably the biggest beef I have in any series or show that does sister or sibling characters and just doesn't do them right. If I got my leg chopped off and my little sister Clow was out there fighting and risking her life, tape a stick to my leg. I will be out there fighting and risking my life to make sure nothing happens to her. So get your ass in gear, Yang. Ruby needs you. And again, I get that where we see Yang now isn't and hopefully won't be how she behaves for the rest of the series or volume. Or at least I f***ing hope so. My other inner hope is that Yang hasn't been completely useless during the time skip. Her outfit says that she doesn't leave the house very often, so obviously she's not out there fighting. But she could still be helping Ruby as a information broker or some kind of hub. I also got the feeling she was like a mechanic or something. I think it's just the cargo pants though. The other character that I'm looking the most forward to, to developing besides Weiss is Jean. It's obvious he took Pira's death really hard. And why wouldn't he? She was probably the only person that ever truly believed in him and pushed him to do better to follow his dreams of becoming a great warrior. So how much stronger or better a leader has he become in Pira's memory? Is he the leader of Ruby, Nora, and Ren? Or did he pass the torch off to Ruby and let her lead? Because let's face it, at the time she was better at it. Also, what is their team name? I'm putting my money on Ranger, because that's the only thing that makes sense. And will we finally learn Jean's semblance? For crying out loud, Rooster Teeth, you guys mentioned this in volume one, it is now volume four. He better not have discovered it without us. And my final comment is that the animation looks great. It does seem different from what we have seen in the past though. And I think that's mainly the lighting. It doesn't seem as flat. And the background has a lot more detailing and three-dimensional shades and lighting in it that make it feel like it's interacting with the characters a lot more. Like in past volumes it was sometimes a little too painfully obvious that the characters in the background were two separate layers. I'm also looking forward to the new music. I just hope they don't get too screamo-y like they kind of did in volume 3 opening. I mean I started to like the opening the more and more I heard it, but it did seem a little out of place in comparison to volume 1 and volume 2's openings. The hype is on though! So thank you so much for watching my reaction and thoughts on the Ruby volume 4 teaser trailer. No, I did not get to see the whole panel, so if there's any major notes or mentions that they had that I have missed, by all means, comments below. Somebody else probably didn't see it, and I would like to know myself. So be sure to check in on Tuesdays when my brother Andrew usually uploads, and Fridays when I, Sarah, usually upload. Until then, geek on!